Hey there, this is Nick, Infrasonic Audio, and today I'm excited to be talking about Disentangler, my new 4HP stereo width and mid side processor for Eurorack. This is an all analog design. It complements warp core very nicely, but really any other stereo effects chain, voice, submix, what have you in your rack, it can do some cool stuff for. Now, before we go any further, I recommend that you put on headphones. Uh, this being a stereo processor, the sounds you're going to hear in this video are really best heard in a good stereo monitoring environment. So please put on headphones or make sure you have a nice ideal stereo listening setup to watch this video. Otherwise, some of this stuff probably isn't gonna make any sense because you're not going to be able to hear it. So the first demo I'd like to show you is a really simple one. This is the easiest way and most basic way to use Disentangler. I've got both outputs of warp core going into the in left and in right inputs of Disentangler, and then the same out left and out right going into the mixer for monitoring. Right now I've got the slider all the way up and the switch set to 1x. In this setting, it's basically just passing the stereo signal through. So if we listen to this sequence, I'm using a nice wide, wide stereo sound in warp core. So if you're listening in stereo, you should be able to hear Quite obviously that stereo width plus the detuning between the outputs gives it a whole lot of stereo width. So this is just passing the stereo signal through. But if I start to move the slider down, we hear that stereo signal getting more and more narrow. So we're sort of reducing the width of that stereo signal, panning the left and the right toward the center. Halfway up, we've got sort of a halfway panned stereo signal. And then of course, all the way back up, we're back to passing through left and right at full width. Nominally, this is pretty useful for changing the stereo width of a chain. So if you've got an effect, maybe a delay or reverb that just is too wide and you wanna narrow it a little bit, you can do that very easily with that slider. If you've got a unison sound that's too wide, uh, like warp core, sometimes the outputs, if you listen in, in pure left-right stereo, it's, it's just too wide. We bring that down and we actually get some mixing of the two uh, channels in the center, which gives us that nice unison beating sum sound. Also with this switch, if we go to 2X, I'm gonna start at the bottom. So mono sum. About halfway up, now we're at pass through. The 2x switch allows us at the top of the slider to actually emphasize the stereo width a little bit. So really what's going on here is we've got left in, left right that are being decoded into mid and side. The mid being sort of the center of the stereo image and the side being analogous to the stuff that's on the sides, uh, hard pan left right or you know pan left right. And then those are normaled into the mid and side inputs here. So with nothing patched into the mid input, the mid output is just going straight into that. And with nothing patched into the side input, the side output is going straight into the side input. The slider and the gain switch are actually setting the level of the side input signal. So whatever signal we're getting in here, the slider and the switch are setting the gain for that signal. So with this slider all the way down, this is effectively silenced and all we're getting in the output after the mid side is decoded is just the mid. And of course, with it all the way up at 1x, now we're getting just straight pass through encode to mid side, decode back to uh, left, right. And with 2x, we're actually amplifying that side input by a factor of two. So we're adding gain to that. And that's what allows us to get that extra wide. <laughs> It uh, overemphasizes the side channels so that you do hear more of that side content in the stereo signal coming through on the outputs. Here's another example using Castor and Pollux. I've got the two outputs from the two oscillators in Castor and Pollux going into a VCA controlled by the same CV, two channels of this VCA. And then I've got that output in stereo going into Disentangler and then back out to the mixer. So if we turn this up, if you're listening in stereo, like you should be, uh, 
you can hear one waveform in the right channel and a different one in the left channel. And as I move the slider down, now we get the sum of both of those waveforms in the center channel. Technically, I guess they're the same waveform, just different notes. So you might be wondering, is there a way to control that effect with CV, that effect that the slider has on the width of the sound? And the answer is yes, uh, not with Disentangler on its own, but if you have a spare VCA somewhere in your rack, you can actually achieve this pretty easily. So what you can do is patch the side out into a VCA, and here's channel four on the quad VCA, getting the side output. And then I'm taking that output back into the side input of Disentangler. I'm gonna leave the slider all the way up and the switch set to 1x, so just normal pass through. And if I turn the VCA all the way up, turn that bias on the VCA up, well now we're getting that full width sound still. If I turn it down, it's having the same effect that the slider would have. Because remember, what this slider is doing is actually changing the level of the side input. So I'm now just doing that externally with the VCA. If I set this somewhere in the middle, and then I turn up the CV, I've got an LFO now providing the CV. So we can hear with that LFO. That's actually changing the width proportional to that LFO CV. And we can actually use the slider in that case almost as a performance tool to sort of limit the amount of effect that has. You can sort of mute the width wideness or whatever you want to call it by moving the slider all the way down. And then you can bring that effect back in by moving the slider up. Now let's take a look at a more complex patch featuring a stereo effects chain going through Disentangler. I've got Castor and Pollux here going through Crest for some distortion and wave folding through a filter off the screen and then back into Nautilus through VCA first for the notes through Nautilus to give it some stereo delay effects and then through Disentangler. And then finally Disentangler is going through this two channels of this VCA at the end out to the output. We'll see why it's going through the VCA shortly. I've also got some drums being sequenced off screen and the sequence to Castor and Pollux is also being sequenced off screen. It sounds like this. So right now, that bass voice is a little dry. If we bring in Nautilus, we start to hear that stereo delay effect going on. And of course we can use Disentangler to remove the stereo and just get down to the mono or any point in between for stereo width. So you might notice I've got the mid patched out of Disentangler into the unused channel on this VCA and then back in. Right now that channel is completely open and nothing's going on with the CV. So the mid channel is unmodified out back in. However, I've also got some CV coming from a couple of switches uh, controlling a ducking envelope that's tied to the kick on the drums. If I enable one of the switches, we'll see these two CVs start to activate uh, negatively from the CV from the envelope, and this gives us the classic ducking effect. So there's that sidechain ducking, and that's applying to the full stereo mix. So that's the output of Disentangler. The full stereo mix is being ducked by that envelope CV on both of those channels. So that of course pulls down not just the bass voice itself, but also the delay on both uh, channels of the stereo. However, if we switch the other one on, The difference is subtle. You'll notice this more in headphones or a good stereo setup, of course. But this is actually just ducking the mid-channel. So that mid-channel out from Disentangler and then back in is just the mid-channel is now being ducked by the envelope. 
So that wide stereo from Nautilus, the delay is not being affected by the ducking. Let's compare. So no ducking at all. Full stereo ducking. It's the very obvious pumping. No ducking at all. Just the mid-channel ducking. So this can be a cool technique if you want to preserve the sides of your image in your mix. Uh, so preserve some of that delay on the side channels, but also make room for the kick from that bass voice, which shares some of the same frequency space. Um, we can just duck the middle channel using Disentangler, and then you can use the slider to set the overall width. So that's a neat little mixing technique. Now let's take a look at how we can use Disentangler to clean up the side channel of that delay a little bit or affect it in interesting ways. So you may notice that the side channels have quite a lot of low end in them right now. That's because the full bass voice is going through the Nautilus delay and we're getting that full bass range delayed in both sides of the stereo delay. We can, of course, use Nautilus's chroma to filter that out and make a little more room for that low end in the center, keep that low end nice and centered. But we can also do this with Disentangler in a slightly more interesting way. So what I'm gonna do here is patch the side out of Disentangler into, I'm just gonna go into the all input of Three Sisters and then I'm gonna come back out of the high pass. And I've got Three Sisters in crossover mode. So full uh, low pass, high pass, and band pass in the center. And I've got very little resonance happening here. Let's keep this all the way down. So now that high pass, that high output is not really doing anything. That sounds pretty much the same as it did before. As I start to turn this up, you can hear the sides get a little bit cleaned up, remove some of the low end from the left and right sides of that delay. But the center of the delay remains unfiltered because we're only filtering the side channel. So again, that's a little bit of a subtle difference, but if we compare that to high-pass the Nautilus, that's cleaning up, that's high-passing the entire wet signal of the delay. This is only high-passing the parts that are not in the center of the stereo image. So overall, we preserve a little bit more of the low end in the center while still having the effect of cleaning up the sides with that, with that filtering. If we turn the resonance up, really start to hear it. This is creating a weird out of phase resonant filter on the side channels. So that's pretty fun. If we overemphasize that with 2X, now we can really hear it. And of course you could modulate that. Uh, that could be a lot of fun. Um, another cool thing with th I like to do with three sisters in Disentangler is apply all three filters to the side channel. And both modes sound pretty cool like this. So it can be kind of subtle. Or you can overemphasize it for sort of that head bending stereo filter effect. And of course, if we bring the slider all the way down, now we're completely removing the side channel from the decoder and we only hear the mid. So you can kind of play with that to interesting effect. Um, we can also turn this down into the 
notch mode of Three Sisters or the phaser type mode. And that sounds really cool. Format mode also sounds great. But of course with format mode, because these are all bandpass filters, you actually end up filtering a lot of the side channel out. So taking the side channel out to a filter, especially a, a multi-band or a dual filter, tri-filter in this case, like Three Sisters or another filter that has multiple bands it can do it simultaneously, uh, can give you some really fun results. Well, I hope that helps explain a little bit of how Disentangler can be used both for mixing and creative purposes, and I hope you enjoy the module and do some really cool stereo processing with it. Thanks for watching.